how to become a professional engineer in South Africa. Today we'll be looking at how to become a professional engineer registered with the Engineering Council in South Africa. We'll be looking at the entry requirements for studying engineering, the different qualifications you can do, and the different pathways that you can follow to register as a candidate engineer and finally to become a professional engineer or engineering technologist. So, there are many benefits to studying engineering. Obviously, there's a big demand for engineers. There's a big demand in South Africa. We know also that there's a big demand overseas. What's great about engineering is that if you study engineering in this country and you're recognized by the Engineering Council in this country, you can go to other countries and their professional bodies will recognize your qualification and your registration there. And that's one of the great things about it. You've got great mobility and there's more information about this. I'll leave in the uh, comments below. You'll be able to read more, more about uh, pathways to registration. There's a video which you can which you can look at. So when you look at the engineering pathways, I'm going to use this poster which we did for the engineering for the uh, Department of Science and Innovation. We produced this 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 poster for them as PACE, and we did it in collaboration with the Engineering Council of South Africa. You can download this poster from the Department of Science and Innovation website. That's DSI. Um, I'll leave a link with that so you can download it, print it out. It's a lovely A3 poster, which you can put on your classroom wall, and it's a very useful health aid. So I'll be taking you through the three, three career pathways to becoming a registered engineer. So you're looking at becoming an engineer three different pathways. The first pathway, a national diploma program. The national diploma program is being phased out. I must mention that because they're no longer offering it. Um, it's been replaced by your B engineering tech, but it's still a recognized uh, program by the engineering council. What happens is once you've completed your three-year diploma, uh, you, which includes a, a practical year, uh, you become a can candidate engineering technician and you can qualify from there and do your, your BTEC and you can become a engineering, fully qualified engineering technologist. That's the first pathway that's recognized. But as I mentioned, it's being replaced, it's being replaced by this qualification here. It's called the Bachelor of Engineering Technology, which you can study at a University of Technology. Uh, your universities of technology. Um, are, are different to your universities. Um, they, they offer more um, practical programs. This particular one is a full degree. It's, not, uh, it's uh, not something to be played with. You still need to have maths and science. You still need to be getting 60% for maths and science to qualify to study this. It's, it's, uh, it's a full qualification, a full degree. And you register from there, once you've done that, as a candidate engineering technologist. You can also from there do the Bachelor of Engineering Honors, which is a one year, and from there go and do the masters at university. So there's still a pathway to university with this Bachelor of Engineering Technology to, uh, to even do your masters at university. The third option, which I'll take you through, is this one here. It's the B degree or BSc degree. Uh, a four-year degree offered at uh, universities in South Africa. Um, it's effectively an honors program. You come out with an NQF8 and you effectively have an honors degree in engineering, whether that be civil, mechanical, electrical, chemical. Uh, you can follow either and you come out with a degree. You then register as a candidate engineer and after three years, you can then be recognized as a professional engineer. Just to mention a little bit more about the candidate engineer program. The candidate engineer is, uh, is really a trial period. So once you've done your qualification, it doesn't mean that you've got the skills and experience to be an engineer. 
you're a candidate engineer. The engineering council basically are, are checking you out. So if you've studied, for example, um, a B engineering technology degree, you become a candidate engineering technology, um, not yet fully recognized. You're doing your candidacy, you be, you're on trial, you're working, you're working under a, an engineer, and you work for approximately three years before you fully qualify. So if you finished your university, for example, you do your three years and you're working as a candidate engineer, after that time, um, you submit your, your, your documents, your, your program to the engineering council, they evaluate it and all those requirements, um, you can find out from them directly and, and then register as a professional engineer with them. So these are the routes you can follow. Um, all the information and more detail we'll leave in the links below. I hope this, that this has helped you to clarify the career paths and all the best for, for your future. And I uh, hope that you uh, are successful in your ventures. If you need more information, contact us, we can help you.